This is the Flow Track Ranking Show. Welcome back. I'm Kevin Sully. On this program, we're going to talk about the men's and women's 1500 meter rankings. And then I'm also going to explain why I'm so excited about the men's 60 meter hurdles. We'll also update the 800 rankings, the 60 rankings, the women's 60 hurdles as well, too. But we'll start first with these 1500 meter rankings. You can find all these on the site. Uh, of course, just put these out. Let's go to the women first. Faith Kipiegon, number one, no surprise. Reigning Olympic champion, Safan Hassan, two, Laura Muir, three, Gudaf Sagai, four, Hailu of Ethiopia, five, Gabrielle Davies Stafford, six, Perrier St. Pierre, seven, and so on. Now, some of these women have not raced yet this year. So obviously someone like Kip Yegon, we're going based off of last year's results, 351, she won the Olympics. That makes sense. But as for 2022, we have not seen Faith Kip Yegon yet. Um in 2022. No results yet for 2022. Same thing with Safan Hassan. Um, Laura Muir is interesting. We have seen her run a little bit so far off distances, and she's going to go for the 1K world record in Birmingham in a couple weeks. But we already have one result, 600, looking solid. So a lot of this is just based off of last year. Gabrielle Davies Stafford we'll see coming up this weekend, the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix. Per your St. Pierre, we have seen. She ran at the Melrose Games, got the victory, um, backing up that ranking. I think seven's a good spot. And by one in Karlsruhe, uh, Meshesha ran well in Karlsruhe as well. And then Josette Norris, who was second to Perrier St. Pierre, gets the 10 spot for now. But all of these right here are very close together. Um, Hailu was behind Mbaye and Meshesha at Karlsruhe. But again, I'm waiting that Olympic performance for her. You see the Olympic final right here, Kip Yegon, Muir, Hassan, the medalists. Now that was Hassan in the midst of, of the triple. So I'm basing this off of if they all ran fresh, what would the result be? And this is our top 10 right now. On the men's side of things, Timothy Chariot won, Jakob Ingebrigtsen two. You could go back and forth between these two guys. Who deserves that number one spot? Ingebrigtsen gets the first win at the Olympics, then backs it up at pre, but then Chariot wins the Diamond League. I give Chariot a slight edge right now, but it is very close. If you wanted to put Ingebrigtsen two, one instead of two, I would not argue with you. What's interesting is this tier right here, this next group, Hoar, Kerr, McSwain, and then who else do you think belongs in that group? Josh Kerr got the bronze medal, and up until Milrose, I would have had him as the number three runner. But Oliver Hoar gets the win over him. I want to factor in recent results because what's the point of racing if you're not going to take results and factor them into the rankings? So I'm going to have Oliver Hoare in that third spot right now ahead of Kerr. McSwain, Kip Sang, Hawker, Katir, they're all so close together. We go back, we look at the Olympic final, and you have Kerr in third, Kip Sang, McCall of Spain, five, Hawker, then McSwain. McSwain, though, had a great rest of the season. Hoare was really strong in the rest of the season and has already shown his form this season. That's why I moved him up above others. Hawker, in there at seventh, he was sixth in the Olympics, remember, and looked pretty solid in that 3K in Melrose. Got, got third, but I think he's at least where he was last year, if not a little bit improved. But as time goes on, he's going to target the American record, the mile. That would obviously give him a big boost. So our top 10 right now for the men, as I mentioned, I'm really excited about the 60 hurdles. And the reason being is we have a great race coming up this weekend that I'm going to talk about in a second. But who are the biggest movers and shakers? Because I debuted this list last week. Well, uh, Devin Allen moves all the way up to third by virtue of his victory at Milrose. Daniel Roberts moved up as well, a close second to Allen. And then Trey Cunningham jumps all the way up to fifth. And the reason Cunningham's fifth, well, he ran the fastest time in the world, 7.46 in Lubbock, quicker than Allen, quicker than Roberts. Pascal Martineau Lagarde won in Karlsruhe. So he was uh, he moved up a tad. Pazzi moved back. He made the final and then had all sorts of trouble in the final in Karlsruhe and finished well off the pace. Levy, Ortega, Eaton round out the top 10, which bumped out Hansel Parchment, the reigning Olympic champion. Don't know if he's going to run indoors, so I don't know if that's going to be that big of a deal. But the world waits on Grant Holloway because this is what we have coming up this weekend. Uh, you see the Melrose Games results here too, and a gap here between Roberts to, to Braithwaite. So I felt good about putting that 
group in that order. But this is what we have coming up this weekend at the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix. We have Allen. We have Cunningham. We have Holloway. We have Roberts. So if you're going off of these rankings, you basically have four of the top five right now in the same race in the beginning of February. So this is going to be a good test for Grant Holloway right out the gate. Let's go back and look at Holloway's... Let's look at this for 2020, 2021, and just see what Holloway did. Obviously, that world record of 729. And he took a couple shots at it indoors. Right, Started off end of January, then went to Leven, 732. Stayed in France, 741. Copernicus Cup in Poland, 738. And then Madrid is where he gets the world record of 729. But... This year, no results yet. This will be his debut, and he's going against a really stacked field, so that'll be fun to watch. Women's 60-meter hurdles, I kept Camacho Quinn number one. Don't know if she's running indoors. Danielle Williams moved way up. Um, Kenny Harrison dropped back. She did not have a good race at Milrose. This is the Milrose results. Brittany Anderson, Devin Charlton, Tania Marshall, and then Kenny Harrison was a surprise fourth. Not going to ding her too much for that. She's already shown that she's in much better form. I'm going to need to see another race before I, I move for any any lower. Um, Samba Mayela of France almost got the win in Karlsruhe over Danielle Williams. They were real close, both timed at 784. So she moves up into the rankings into four. Anderson, who won. Milrose is five ahead of Charlton. Visser, I'm keeping on there. And Marshall ran decently well at. Milrose, and then you have the two collegians rounding out 9-10. Grace Stark of Florida, Aaliyah Armstrong of LSU. Stark ran a really good flat 60 over the weekend, so keep an eye on her. So that was the major updates in the 60 hurdles. The flat 60, Coleman went out and won. We had him number one. He stayed number one. Beats Trayvon Bromel by 1-100, 649 to 650 in Milrose. Bromel is running a 200, and then he's shutting his season down. So I guess it just depends how we want to do these rankings. Do we want to keep him in there even after he's declared that his season's over? Or do we want to move him off the list since he's not going to be running World Indoors? Stay tuned on that. Uh, Baker was in the 6'5s. Solid race. I think he's good there for third. Lamont Jacobs we haven't seen yet. But going off of last year's indoors in the Olympics, he's in four. Five is Sue. Bracey was a late scratch for Milrose. But I'm keeping him in there. And Micah Williams of Oregon it has been tearing it up. So keep an eye on on Micah Williams' chance to move up. He's not going to run. Well, I don't think he's not going to run USA's because he's going to be running on the NCAA season. But he's a guy who has already established himself. Let's look at um, Micah Williams' season. Let's go back here to the flat 60. It's been very consistent. In, indoor champ last year, but this year looks to be not missing a step. So 660, 649, 659, 648. So two 648s already. That's that's impressive level of consistency for Williams. On the women's side of things, Elaine Thompson, hurrah, ran a 60 outdoors in Jamaica with some wind in her face, 719, keeping her there. Fraser Price, don't know. Tolu, Ahore. Uh, Asia Del Pont will be running in the... Um, Ostrava World Indoor Tour coming up on Thursday. Aaliyah Hobbs has been running well. She won in Milrose, so she is moving up. I think she's someone to watch ahead of Oliver, Kambunji, Sant Price, and Alfred. Going back to those Milrose results because there's another win for Hobbs, 7-11. Briscoe is right on the cusp of getting ranked, and if I pull some people out because they're not showing up, I think Briscoe would be the next person in. And I think there's a good chance because if you look at the Americans, hey, who's going to make the team here? There's only three Americans on the list right now. Briscoe's right in that mix. So there's a really good chance Briscoe makes the team. So we've done the 1500. We've done the 60 hurdles. We've done the 60. Let's jump finally to the last one, the 800. Hopple moves in because he won at Milrose uh, ahead of Saruni. Took some people out who we haven't seen yet. Brazier, I kept him at three. Didn't run an 800, but ran a 400. Proves that he's healthy. If he runs an 800 and runs what we know Donovan Brazier is capable of. I think we could see him crack into that top two and perhaps be number one. But right now I have him third. But the big the big movers there were Hopple and Serenity bumping in. Women's side of things, the thing Mo ran the mile, dropped out with a lap to go. 
But the fact that she ran it is already a success, I think, shows just how good a shape she is in. Not going to let that impact her to her 800-meter ranking. Raven Rogers ran the quarter. Ajay Wilson was the one who moved up because she won in Milrose. The time wasn't anything that she hasn't done before, but she looked pretty good against Natoya Gould. So moved Wilson all the way up to number five. And then coming in at number 10, Brooke Feldmeyer. If you look at the women's eight list, she is at the top of the list for indoors this year. Let's look 2021, 20, 22. Two flat 92. Feldmeyer, number one, she ran it and in Fayetteville. So I'm putting her on the list. I'm putting her on the list. We're getting to that time where it's not what you've done in the past. It's, hey, have you shown up indoors yet? And, and run a race. And if your time has been pretty good and you're comp- against decent competition, uh, one of those two things, then you're going to get into that top 10. You see Wilson there in third with that Milrose victory. So there's your top 10 on the women's side. I think we'll see more of this change with that New Balance indoor meet coming up. You know, you have decent fields also in the World Indoor Tour. So more of the bigger names are going to compete. But you know, you have another women's 800 coming up this weekend with Natoya Gould. Perhaps she can do something there to establish herself. Men's 8, Hopple, again, putting it on the line there. So you can check out all the rankings on the site. They're updated as of February 2nd. 1,500, 800, 60 hurdles, and 60. I'll add another event in next week. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you guys next time.